last section on conic sections. It's about identifying conics in general form. We've not been writing conics this way, but you can write them as y equals, no, not y equals, sorry, just as the equation ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus cy plus f equals zero. It's called the general form of, an, of a conic, which is different from the standard of vertex form that we've been dealing with. And just so you know, general forms of things tend to be equal to zero and just have um, these capital letters for their coefficients. In this video, we have two main goals. One is to, given an equation in general form, identify what type of conic it is, and then two, to convert from general form to the standard or vertex form that we've been working with. So this BXY term is not something we've been dealing with. Because what a BXY term often does is take an ellipse that has a horizontal orientation. This would have no BXY term, meaning no x times y in the equation anywhere. If you have a BXY term, it often twists it and gives it um, this, this rotation. And those are substantially more difficult to deal with with the tools that we have so far. So we've not been graphing conics that have a BXY term. So like we've been seeing conics that have looked like this without being in this form. This would have an A value of four, a B value of zero, a C value of negative five, D is one, E is negative one, F is three. So you have to be aware this BXY term is often gonna be equal to zero to avoid the rotations of our conics. Don't know why I cleared all that, but I did. If you have a conic equation in general form with a BXY term, you want to be following this, um, basically the discriminant, right? You use the discriminant, which is B squared minus 4AC. It's the same idea, but slightly different now because A, B, and C represent slightly different things. But based on how B squared minus 4AC calculates, you can use this to determine if it's a circle, ellipse, hyperbola, or parabola. So for example, in this yellow one, B squared minus 4AC, becomes 25 minus 4 times 4 times negative 10, which is 25 plus 160, which is 185. Now 185 is positive. B squared minus 4ac is greater than 0 in this case, so this would be a hyperbola. If it came out equal to zero, it would be a parabola. If it came out negative, we'd have to do a little bit more digging to see if it's a circle or ellipse. My guess is that'll happen here. Let's find out. B squared minus 4ac would be 16 minus 4 times 2 times 6, which is 16 minus 48, which is negative 32. Okay, so, so far we know it's either a circle or ellipse because it came out negative. B squared minus 4ac came out negative. So if b equals 0 and a equals c, which isn't happening here, b is not 0 and a is not c, it'd be a circle. So this is not a circle. So if b doesn't equal 0 or a doesn't equal c, it's an ellipse. So that's this. This is an ellipse. You can follow those formulas quickly to find if it's a circle, hyperbola, ellipse, parabola, what type of conic it is. And that'll always work. You can always use this, even if there is no B term, it'll still work that way. The next thing I'm gonna show you is kind of a bonus. You don't need to know this, but it can be a bit quicker. If you don't have a BXY term, if it's just AX squared plus CY squared, well then you can follow this flow chart. Are both X and Y squared? Does A equal C? Do A and C have the same sign? So like here, the A value is three, the C value is five. Are both x and y squared? Mm, yes. So I keep going. Does a equal c? 3 does not equal 5. No. So I keep going. Do a and c have the same sign? Yes. a and c are both positive. So I'm here. This is an ellipse. If it was like 3x squared minus 5y squared, it would be a hyperbola. But it wasn't, so it's not. We can do it again here. Are both x and y squared? Well, there is no y squared term. Our a value is 1, our c value is 0. No, they're not both squared. This is a parabola. Now, again, we could still do the b squared minus 4ac stuff. That never goes away. So if all you want to do is just get this thing on lock and use it over and over and over, sweet, go for it. But this flowchart can be pretty nice. All right, now we're going to convert from general form to standard form. 
the standard form is the form we've been graphing from all along. It involves completing the square a couple of times, which I'm sure you remember how to do, sarcastically. Uh, if you don't remember and want to go find a video I have on completing the square, I'll link it in the description down below. I want to first determine what type of conic this is. I know this is a hyperbola. If I follow the flow chart on the previous page, since these end up having opposite signs, but x and y are both squared, this is a hyperbola. So to graph a or to get a hyperbola, hyperbolas I know look like this. We haven't actually done hyperbolas that have um, an h and a k, but right now we're not graphing this, so there's not going to be a problem. I'm going to make this equation look like this, and again, I do that by completing the square. So I want to keep this um, standard form equation written. I keep this equation written over here where I can refer to it just so I know what I'm going for. I'm going to color code this. I recommend you do the same. I'll start with this light blue. I'm going to color, I'm going to get the x's together. So over here I have 2x squared plus 8x. Then I'm going to get the y's together. Negative 3y squared minus 18y. And finally I'm going to move over that constant term f to have this equal negative 5. I'm going to factor out the coefficients on the squared terms. So this 2 is going to factor out, and I get x squared plus 4x. And I, I leave that gap there intentionally. This negative 3 is also going to factor out. I get y squared plus 6y. And it's still going to be equal to this negative 5. Okay, when you complete the square, you're calculating b over 2 squared. And the b term is going to be this and this. I have to do it twice. So right now the b value is 4, so b over 2 is 2, so b over 2 squared is 4 again. I'm going to add a 4 right here, and add a 2 times 4 right here. So the obvious glaring question is, wait, why was that 2 times 4? Because when I added a 4 here, it was really an 8. It's inside that parenthesis. And whatever I do to one side of the equation, I do to the other. So if I add an 8 to one side, I have to add an 8 to the other. So the, the same thing has to be done to both sides. Do the same thing to both sides. You can do the same thing with the y term um, with that positive 6 there. So the b term here is 6. So b over 2 squared is going to be 6 divided by 2 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. I'm going to add a 9 here. See if you can figure out what I'm going to add right here. It should take a second. It's actually going to be a negative 27 because negative 3 times 9 gets me a negative 27 here. I'm adding the same thing to both sides. Okay, well the whole point of completing the square is it makes the factoring really simple. The left side now factors into 2 times x plus 2 squared. The y's become negative 3 times y plus 3 squared. And then I'm going to simplify and combine all the like terms on the right side. Negative 5 plus 8 is negative 3. Minus 27 is negative 30. I get a negative 30 over here. Is that right? Negative 27? No, negative 24. The last step is pretty straightforward. Divide everything by negative 24. I'm doing that because I want to get this to equal 1. Hyperbolas are equal to 1. And that gives me x plus 2 squared over negative 12 is how I'll write this, plus y plus 3 squared over 8 equals 1. And I want to have the minus in the middle, so I'm going to swap the, swap the spot of these two terms. So it would be y plus 3 squared over 8 minus x plus 2 squared over 12 equals 1. And there is the equation of the hyperbola. Complete the square twice. Seems pretty awful. Um, once you do it a few times, you realize it's not that bad. We're going to make it so that you get nice, clean, pretty whole numbers that you don't have to stress about. So I'm going to delete all of this, including some of the work, for which I apologize, but the work's going to go away. So if you want to find it, rewind a little bit. Okay, this is going to be a parabola. We know that because only y is squared, there's no x squared anywhere. Since it's a y squared parabola, its equation is going to be x equals 
we've been saying one over four p. I'm just gonna call it a. I think x is gonna be equal to a squared. Yeah, one over four p is fine. One over four p times y minus k squared plus h. I want to make this equation happen. The key is I get the x by itself. So my first step is going to be multiplying both, or just adding the x to both sides. So if I add the 12x here and add it here, I'm going to flip around how this looks. I'm going to get 12x equals 2y squared plus 20y minus 10. This time I'm just completing the square once. You might think that makes it nicer, but it's actually kind of confusing because it's less obvious where things go. I again factor out the a term here, this coefficient, so I pull out the 2 and I get y squared plus 10y minus 10. That negative 10 is just going to sit out there. Currently the b term here is now 10. So if my b term is 10, then b over 2 squared is 10 over 2 is 5, and 5 squared is 25. So I'm going to, I'll change colors for this, probably should have changed colors there. I'm going to add a 25 here, which is really the same as adding a 50 over here. And you might not like, or you might recognize, you don't actually need to add the 50 over there. What I could also do is just subtract the 50 from here. Adding a 50 here and subtracting a 50 here is the same as not doing anything, since like I added 0. So I add 50, subtract 50. I can show it another way if you'd like. Mm, let me leave it like that. There are other ways, but I'm not going to get too confusing here. If you like having the minus 50 here, or the plus 50 here, so if we added a 50 here and added a 50 here, fine, go over it, no problem. So we have 12x plus 50 equals 2, this now factors into y plus 5 squared minus 10. I'm going to just solve to get the x by itself now. I know that I want to have the x all by itself, like we have up here. So I subtract the 50 from both sides. There's that negative 50 I was talking about. And we get 12x equals 2 times y plus 5 squared minus 60. Now for my final step, I'm going to divide everything by 12. And I mean each individual term has to get divided by 12. And that gives me x equals 2 over 12 reduces to 1 over 6 times y plus 5 squared minus 5, because 60 over 12 is 5. And there is this equation in standard form. It's got the 1 over 4p. We would say that p is 1.5. It has an h and a k. They're both those negative 5 values. Circles are much simpler. Circles are the easiest one to convert out of. That's why I didn't show that one. Um, ellipses are also probably a little bit simpler than hyperbolas. So I showed the two toughest ones here, in my opinion. Hopefully, as you look over homework and get some practice in, you'll see that this is about as bad as it gets. So if you feel like you can handle this, then you're in good shape. If not, you might still be okay as things get a bit simpler. General form of a conic is ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus bx plus cy equals plus f equals zero. I just read all that. I don't know why it took all that time. The bxy term typically causes a rotation or dilation of the conic that we don't deal with in this class. Determining the type of conic depends on the b squared minus 4ac value. We're following the flow chart of no bxy term. And complete the square often twice to convert from general form to standard form. Okay, I know this is this is kind of creepy, but but look look behind you. There's somebody behind you. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please like it and subscribe it and share it and do all those good things. Or you can just sit there and be distracted by my spirograph as it goes around and around forever. Just going and going and bouncing and bouncing. See you next time.